Did you plan to be a filmmaker? I always loved movies. Uh, so I, I never thought one day that I was gonna make movies until, that, that happened in college. Uh, but I, I was always obsessed with movies. And um, you know, my brother and I would go like when I was a kid in suburban Chicago, like movies were like three fifty. So I would go to the movies all the time. We would sneak into the R-rated movies all the time because <laughs> you could. Um, and we just saw everything under the sun, um, and it was like a big deal. Um, so you know, this is the time that we would wait for hours and hours and hours for Star Wars to open or the Indiana Jones movies to open. And you know, I would you'd be in line for like two and a half, three hours, um, waiting. And the lines would wrap around the theater and. Um, so I didn't plan to be, uh, but it was always a, a, a passion and an obsession of mine since I was a kid. When did it become something you had to do? I took an incredible class in college. Um, uh, it was called the American Documentary Tradition. Uh, the professor uh, showed us pretty much the entire canon of classic American documentary films. We started with Nanook of the North. Uh, we moved into Penny Baker and the Maisel Brothers and Barbara Koppel, uh, Rob Epstein and Jeffrey Friedman, um, really all of the major documentarians of the day. We watched all of those films and then we would sit around and we would talk about them, often really um, emotionally or, you know, some, you'd, there'd be crying, <laughs> there'd be, you know, a lot of debate. And um, I was really, uh, my eyes really were open to what, film could do, the power of film to generate those kinds of reactions in people really knocked me out. So that's when I got the idea that this is actually something that people do. Um, this is a profession and, and that's when I started to pursue it, um, really after that college class. What do you get from filmmaking that you don't get from anything else? Um, I, think, I think to be a filmmaker, you have to have an inc sort of an innate curiosity about humans. You have to want to know about people. Um, you have to want to know about all the different shades that are inside of them. The light, the dark, everything in between. Um, I think you have to really love people um, because it's not a solitary pursuit. It's a communal effort. It's collaborative. Um, so it's a combination of being curious about people and also really enjoying being around people. I mean, unless you're making little stop animation films in your garage, which is totally cool, and you're by yourself, um, you're going to be with people. And so filmmaking is this incredible opportunity to learn about the world through the eyes of other, other humans and also to create these incredible little micro communities um, who are your collaborators, you know, your, your writers, your cinematographers, your producers, your production designers, your everybody that you get to work with. It's like this, each film is this opportunity to be a little mini, mini family. Um, it can also be a mini disaster you know, or a big disaster, depending. Um, so it's just this incredible opportunity to learn a lot about yourself by being around other people, you know, who are kind of on this sort of common goal. You're all on this ship together, um, trying to get to this place um, in the service of a story. Yeah, I think it was it Francis Ford Coppola, and I use this quote a lot, but nothing invites chaos, like passion, and you know, just so, so yeah. like you're saying, it could be a wonderful experience, or there can be a lot of things that yeah. can happen because it's it's high stakes, pressure, you have yeah. to make your day. If it's, you know, I'm sure with documentaries it's different. But. I think it's not any different with documentaries. I mean, I think people like to think that there's documentaries and there's narrative cinema and that they're, that they're completely different lanes of filmmaking, but there's so much that's the same. It's still story. It's still character. You still have to engage people. Um, in the most exciting situations, they're both for a big screen. So you have to think about how you're capturing the images and what you're, you know, the only difference really is that with documentary, it's unpredictable. You don't know what people are gonna say, you don't know what they're gonna do. Um, in scripted, for the most part, you are controlling all of that. So there's a thrill to it. Um, but I think all the same things that I learned in narrative filmmaking, I apply to documentary filmmaking. A lot of my favorite filmmakers are filmmakers that uh, have their hands deep in documentary as well. Scorsese, Spike Lee, um, Bennett Miller, um, people who um, go out and make films you know, about the world and real people and then go off and make incredible narratives as well. Um, and I think a lot of the tools that you learn as a documentarian are very similar, if not the same, uh, that, you, that you need as a scripted filmmaker. It's story, I mean really everything is in service of the story. 
Um, the only difference is that in documentary, it's life, it's true, it's real. Um, and you're in service of sort of doing the best job to bring that to light. But you still at some, some point have to craft where it's yeah. going. And even if it's showing you, you have to sort of paint, you know, for the audience perspective within that two hour. Absolutely. I mean, you're still using the same tools. You're still, you're still using editing, music. You're still deciding about composition and lighting. And, and you're still using incredible cameras that we have at our disposal right now. Um, uh, graphics and animation, all kinds of stuff. Um, I think what's, it's really exciting time to be a documentary filmmaker because those toolkits are expanding. You know, people's ideas about documentaries are like really, really expanding now. So you're seeing films that are, um, that you wouldn't have seen back in kind of the earlier eras of documentary. Um, a documentary used to be more kind of like Frederick Wiseman. Like you go in, you show up at a big hospital or an institution, you turn on your camera and you let life unfold. I mean, now they've become a lot different, a lot more cinematic, a lot more, um, I'd say engaging in some ways. Like Sherman's March yeah. from years ago. And, and, and maybe to see it today, it would seem slow. I still love that film. Yeah. And I love his little like sort of talking to the camera and, yeah. and almost like a precursor to some reality TV where you have people doing these confessionals, but a much different feeling from it. Yeah, than, definitely. Than, yeah. I don't think you would have uh, um, a, a Morgan Spurlock if you hadn't had Sherman's March. That's true, you know? right. Yeah.